what you think best, Lucius Narcissa. When her mother set her down to tell her that arranged her marriage, Narcissa Black could tell Druella was tense. After Andromeda's disgraceful exit into the arms of a man whose name no one would say, Druella Black probably feared this daughter would be rebellious as well. And she might have, might have done more than cast her eyes down at the polished walnut floor and murmur polite acceptance of her parents' choice if her brittle mother had offered up anyone other than Lucius Malfoy. Lucius Malfoy. Blonde, aristocratic, so cold you feared your hand would burn if you touched him. Lucius Malfoy, who had kissed her fingers at the Yule Ball and told her she was beautiful. She'd been prepared to ignore him, would have brushed it off as one of the endlessly insincere compliments men gave the Black Sisters. If she hadn't happened to glance up at his face, he'd meant it, or rather, he'd used the conventionally polite and empty phrase to mean so much more. Her mother cared about prestige. Druella cared how people saw her. She cared about being successful by the rules of her own world, and, in truth, she wasn't. Not really. Three girls and no heir, and she was a failure as a pure-blood wife. People whispered it was shocking Cygnus hadn't set her aside. That had driven her into polishing the children she had until they were afraid to be anything other than perfection. Narcissa had never doubted her mother only loved her because she seemed to be a flawless extension of the woman's own desires. Andromeda had been an excellent lesson in what happened to black girls who developed flaws, and it wasn't motherly love. It was a scorch mark on the family tapestry. Lucius, though, he'd brushed a finger over the scar on her forehead, the one she'd gotten when she'd fallen off her horse and her head had met a rock, and murmured it only made her more beautiful. Lucius, with whom who'd she'd been going on wholly appropriate and quiet walks to the lake, Lucius who'd coaxed her into sharing details of her home life, and who'd said after a bit, his voice tight, well, we'll marry young, won't we? She had turned, shocked, and he'd kissed her for the first time, his lips light across her cheek. People should take care of their family. People should value their family above anything else. She'd smiled at him then, and he'd smiled back at how feral her expression seemed. I knew you had a core of tempered steel, he whispered. I knew you were the strongest witch I'd ever met. So now, as she sat in their light-filled front parlor and Druella Black told her her future, she almost permitted herself one of those wild smiles. She would have, if her mother might not have interpreted such as cheek or immodesty and slapped her for it. Whatever you and daddy think is best, she said. Druella patted her on the cheek, pleased. Such a good girl, she said, so biddable. And Narcissa Black bowed her head and allowed her mother to think whatever she liked, while she vowed that no child of hers would ever fear that love was conditional. I'd walk into hell for my child, she thought to herself. I'd defend her against anyone or anything.